back then, you know, I was a huge, even to this day, I'm not going to say back then, I was a huge Rick James fan. When I was in the Navy, I, used to, I had all of his joints. I used to be in the mirror singing his records. I used to be able to do a pretty good Rick James. So I used to sing Mary Jane. I mean, he's the only person that I actually paid to go to his concert. You know what I'm saying? Because back then, we used to bum rush concerts. You, I don't know if they still do that. But we used to come with like 50 guys and bum rush. And just, just, just rush the door. Maybe they would catch two or three, but the other 30 or the other 30 something guys would get in. And I was always one who would get in. You know what I mean? I mean, the Nassau Coliseum, I remember one time, the Nassau Coliseum has these giant uh, plate glass windows going all the way around it. I remember this big buff guy named Sabu picked up a garbage can, just broke one of those shits. And n niggas ran through the glass before it could even break all the way. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Got shredded. You know, <laughs> to get in, <laughs> see Earth, Wind, and Fire, man, it was off the hook back then. I'll never forget the first night I met him, you know, I, that's the first person that I would say out of all the celebrities that I met that I was, I was starstruck. And I, I, I remember we got in a limo and uh, he started kicking it and he was mad niggerish, man, which was, you know, right up my alley. He was buck wild, you know what I'm saying? He, he was a regular dude and uh, he had mad pimping styles, mad, mad pimping skills, man. We went to to the restaurant. We was in a real high class, Beverly Hills, upscale, posh, whatever you want to call it. And he came in and was talking to the the whitest, blondest, blue eyedest, most purest American apple pie eating white woman like this. Come here, bitch. I'm Rick Giants. Licked the whole side of her face, man. What'd she do? She was with it. He boned her after that, man. He boned her after that. It was no, <laughs> it was none of the things you would think would happen if, if a black man does these, walks up to a white woman and licks the whole side of her face and calls her a bitch. All right? What other wild <laughs> stuff you can do with women? Oh, man. I seen him tell women, pull out their titties. You know what I'm saying? I seen him tell women, all the women to give another, serve another man, give him a blow. I, I seen him do it all, man. Anything that, uh, that's part of the, something you would think a pimp would do. And this wasn't a pimp, this is a rock star. It wasn't no pimp, it was just a straight up player, man. He, he wasn't trying to, it was like, that's how he was rolling, man. And the women was all with it, man. I got a friend, a good friend that broke up with his girl because he took it to one of the concerts and Rick, called on stage and threw his tongue down her throat. She was with it. They were supposed to get married, man. You know what I'm saying? He's seen his fiance sucking Rick's tongue on stage in Madison Square Garden, man. <laughs> this shit really took place, you know what I'm saying? Anyway, get back to back then, you know, we started really getting tight because my man was buck wild. He was, you know, and I had, you know, I had started doing things that I wasn't doing before I got out the Navy. Like I was experimenting with the coke and, and, and drinking a little bit more, and smoking weed, the whole Hollywood scene. I was, to get, I was drawn into all of that, you know. And uh, my brother didn't do any of this shit. So it was, whatever was available for Eddie Murphy on the dark side, I got all of it. Cause he didn't want any of it. I got all. It was it was millions of chicks lined up that had a chipped toenail or you know something was wrong with them. That's all it took with him. Chipped toenail. I don't care how fine she was, man. Toenails chipped. You don't want her? Fine. That I was having them. You know what I'm saying? It was all kind of cats wanting to hang out with kilos of blow. He didn't want to do blow. Oh, you don't want to hang out with them? Fine. It was Jamaicans with bales of weed like this. Come on, I give you all you want for free. No, just hang out with me, Eddie. He wasn't with it. You don't want the weed? Fine. I was there for all that shit, man. And Rick James was the, the embodiment of all of that by himself. He had the weed. He had the chicks. He had the drink. He had the location. He's the first person who I went to his house. He had a pool in his living room. 
All right? It wasn't no separate. It was in his living room. It was a gigantic pool with plants all around it. I bugged out, man, from that whole shit. You know what I'm saying? I'm hanging out. We go up to his house for the weekend and got snowed in. And he had, his house was like, it was one big mansion, then it had uh, connecting joints to it. You know what I'm saying? And, and he had, and each one in the house was, was filled up with women. You know, the Mary Jane girls and this one, Val Young and the other one. You know what I'm saying? Then the groupies in the next one, and, and some more groupies in this one over here. And processing the do rags is over there. I mean, it was off the hook. It was around the clock food. You understand? He had Linda Hunt coming out with whatever you want at 24 hours a day. I had never been exposed to nothing like that. And uh, that was kind of like my first uh, inside look at my man's whole behavior. And he, he had this thing with me where he used to always like fuck with me, man. I don't, I don't know what, what started it, but he would fuck with me. Like we went up to the house and uh, we snowed in and he took it upon himself I never forget is to get on a loudspeaker throughout the whole compound and say, if anybody gives Charlie Murphy some pussy, they fired. I, I don't know what made him do that. You know, I don't even know if there was a discussion with all the chicks, like, you know, I'm getting them first or whatever. But he, I remember he did that. And he had the security monitor me the whole time I was there. I thought that was weird because everybody else was doing their thing. But he did, for some reason, he didn't want me to have any fun. After that, we kept hanging out. You know, whenever he was in town, we would hang out or whatever. We'd run into each other in L.A. And then, you know, uh, he and I, because of the, you know, the drug thing, we had a, like a, it was a separate la relationship outside the one that we all had when Eddie was there, because Eddie didn't get high. He used to wake up in the morning and say, why y'all motherfuckers can't, why is everybody so tired? We, because we didn't go to sleep yet. And it'd be time to go to work. We would be up all night. We went to Studio 54. And back then, Studio 54, even to this day, I'll say, Studio 54 was the ultimate uh, club. The ultimate. There has never been and never will be nothing that goes beyond that spot. That spot had, you walk in, they had people buck naked with body paint on for their outfit. You know what I'm saying? Now you be talking to a chick for an hour, and then you realize she's buck naked. You know what I'm saying? You think that she got a dress on that was tight, and you start seeing the hair on the crotch. And you, this motherfucker's buck naked. You know what I'm saying? And then, you know, <laughs> everything was going on up in there. Up in the balcony, niggas was doing their thing in the balcony. Whatever they want, have sex, get high. You then come back downstairs, start dancing, then go to the bar, start drinking, and then they had food in there. It was like you come in and do whatever you want and stay till the, the sun came up spot. So all of the, the who's who in show business and then in the business world, they was in there. They was buck wild in it. So he handed me the blunt, we let it up, start smoking it. I guess that's the peace offering or whatever. You know, we smoking the blunt. And then uh, my man just said, yo, do Charlie Murphy. It's like 10, at least 10 women. It was, it, was, it, was, it was a lot of women on the bed, man. I mean, blonde hair, brunette, afro, cornbread. It was all there. That's a smorgasbord. That's whatever you want, man. That's whatever you like. It was even an oriental over there. Now, how many black men you know can say they bone oriental? Holla. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm saying that's, that's rare, man. That's rare in America. That's rare in America. I can, you know, I can proudly say I'm a member of that class, man. You know what I'm saying? That, you know, I went there. And it was, you know, all because of Rick Jane. That's what turned me on to that. You know what I'm saying? I ain't ashamed to admit it. You know what I'm saying? It was a good time, a good thing. Like I told you, I whip Rick's ass a minimum of 10 times. That's a minimum. That's a bare minimum. It's been more than that. But I only, I'm only going to tell you a couple of the stories because, you know, Rick is so wild and has went so far off the, the meter. It's shit that I can't even tell, talk, tell you on TV. I mean, you know, I, for the sake of our friendship, you know what I'm saying, I, I'm not even going to bring it up. But trust me, he's went there. He, he, he has went where it's like, yo, Rick, man, what the fuck is wrong with you, man? You done took this shit too far. And his response is like this. 
There's no such place. Darkness. Let's go to the abyss, nigga. <laughs> I'm not with it, man. I don't want to go to the abyss, man. You know what I'm saying? Rick wants to go to the abyss. In fact, he dwells in the abyss. Rick James dwells in the abyss, okay? And he, and he wants company sometimes, you know? And, and for some reason, he likes to reach out for me. Whenever I'm around, when he, when he wants to go there, he will reach out for me to try to take me to the abyss with him. And I'm not with it, man. I'm not with it. And that's when we end up, you know, tussling or whatever, you know what I'm saying? What I really think is that, you know, Rick would be so fucking high when he was doing a lot of these things that when he received these beatdowns, he probably don't even remember getting them. I, that, that's the only thing I could come up with. For you to keep doing the same thing, get an ass whipping, come back, do this, go there again, get another ass whipping. But the one thing that you had in common in all of those ass whippings was you was fucked up. That t kind of tells me you don't remember getting the ass whipping. He probably would wake up the next morning and be like, damn, I must have ran a marathon yesterday. I was in a marathon, where's my sneakers at? You know what I'm saying? I, that's the only thing I can think of, man. Damn, my jaw's hurting. I must have went to the dentist yesterday. You know what I'm saying? He would wake up and totally forget that he got his ass whipped. I mean, you, you know, most men, you, we have egos and, and the ass whipping is kind of hard to accept. So he probably was in denial and, you know, black, blacked it out and came up with his own excuse for his soreness the following day. The reason he was going to a chiropractor or whatever, you know, he might have, I must have fell off a horse. So my, my back is hurting. But that's from when the foot was up your ass, nigga. You didn't fall off no horse. You know what I'm saying? But he would come up with his own shit. <laughs> he was riding horses with Eddie and Trevor. Yeah. I'm hearing doctors was riding horses yesterday. I was <laughs> slipping death. He had forgot when darkness was like this. Paya! You know what I'm saying? Let me not forget that, you know, Rick James was very mad. He remembered that ass whipping because he wanted revenge. He called back. And they all motherfuckers. And, and uh, you know how he tried to set it up the first time? Because he really wanted to get me, you know what I'm saying? He felt that, you know, I, I was the main one that was pummeling his legs. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, <laughs> this is what he did, man. He challenged us. He said he's not a challenge. He said he was coming over to play some ball, right? So that particular day, I wasn't there. But I, this is how I know it was all about him getting me. He brings over the guy with the crooked eye and all of them to play ball. And they all got sneakers on, but Rick got on cowboy boots, right? As soon as the game started, he just kicked. My man Fruity in the ball. That was the end of the game. <laughs> that was the end of the game, man. So who do you think he was going to kick the balls that day? <laughs> check, ball check. Paya! Kick Fruity in the balls and get back in the limo and drive back to Buffalo? You came all the way from Buffalo to New Jersey. I whipped your ass about eight days ago. That was for me, but I wasn't there that day. So Fruity, he had to take one to the nuts, man. <laughs> And you know what? I know he probably went home and felt that he, you know, he was victorious that day. But the, the reality of the whole thing is Fruity has two children today, so you weren't that victorious, okay? Still friends, man. How are you still friends with him? We still see each other on a regular. Whenever I go to California, you know, Rick James is like a family friend. He knows my moms. He knows my brother. He knows he knew my pops before he passed. He knows... Uh, my kids, I know a couple of his kids, I know his sister, I know his brother, I, I met his mother before she passed. I know, you know, we, we know each other, man. This is just some kooky shit that went on in the 80s that looking back on it, it was insanity when it was happening, man, but it was just normal, it was, it was, it was the 80s, it was the time, you know. It just happened and, it, and, you know, and now I can look back on it and it's funny as hell, so why not talk about it? You know what I'm saying? Why not have let somebody else laugh? Because I laugh when I think about this shit. Because the shit was funny and it was, you know, it was insanity. And you know, hey, it happened. 